Good morning, friends. How are you? Happy Thursday. I saw the other day um, on somebody's stories, they were asking what annoys you most by the people that you watch on stories. And somebody said, I hate when people say happy Thursday, happy Friday, happy Wednesday. And I was like, um, I say that every time. <laughs> so if that annoys you, just keep on. You don't have to watch my stuff, you know? <laughs> but it made me laugh because I was like, hmm, I think I always start my videos by saying, hey friends, happy Thursday. And apparently that's annoying to some people. But anyway, how is everybody today? Man, several of you just hopped on here right quick. Um, so today we're going to be talking about gratitude. So most of us, this seems like, yeah, gratitude. What's new, right? <laughs> okay, I put my cup down. I always think I can get on here and like drink my coffee with you, but then I start talking and I can't drink my coffee. So today, um, <clears throat> we were talking about gratitude. Gratitude releases joy. How many of you have learned this on such a personal deep level? Like how many of you have learned the life changing impact that comes from practicing gratitude. Good morning, Annette. Um, gratitude is like, hey, Kathleen. Um, we've been talking a lot about practicing new thoughts, choosing our thoughts. We can choose, you know, the positive. We can choose to look at the negative, what we choose to dwell on, what we choose to focus on. And gratitude is the same way. It takes practice. In the moment when we are tempted to complain, when we are tempted to focus on the negative, in that moment, we have to learn to make a choice. And like I've said before, we can choose to stay in that complaining, wallowing state. I've made that choice a lot of times. Does that help me feel better? Does that help me become who I want to become? No. So in those moments, I have to start asking myself, who do I want to be? Do I want to be a complainer that is so whiny all the time? Nobody wants to be around that person. I don't feel good when I'm that person. So I have to I have to go back to my deepest desires, my deepest longings of who I want to be and who I know God made me to be. And who do I really want to be? I want to be grateful. So he talks about how he uses marriage as an example. <clears throat> And he says, you know, I can look at all the things that are wrong with my spouse, all the things that annoy me, the bad, the weird habits, the things that you see when you live with someone 24-7. Um, and I can really get fixated on that, right? Or with any relationship or even I've noticed this with the church, with your pastor, with, you know, you can focus on all the things you wish they did differently, Right. Your kids, your spouse, your friends, your church, your coworkers, or we can practice gratitude. I can start naming the things I'm thankful for about my husband, and you know what happens in that moment? My my mindset shifts. Gratitude releases joy. So if I start thinking, "Oh my goodness," I can think about, "Okay, my husband does this. It totally annoys me." what in the world? And I can just go down that trail or I can choose. Oh my goodness. He's such a hard worker. He's loyal. He makes me laugh. He's so laid back. He doesn't get into my roller coaster of emotions. He's such a good dad. He's such a responsible, he has integrity. You know, I can, and what happens when I do that? What happens when I choose that? And I physically make myself name the things I'm grateful for. What happens? Gratitude releases joy. I feel a shift in my spirit. I feel a shift in my mood, in my emotions, but that takes practice. It takes actually putting it into practice. So that means actually stopping yourself in the middle of the complaints and saying, what am I grateful for? Look around. Don't just spout, oh, I'm just thankful for my family. I'm thankful. No, stop and think about it. I am thankful for this today. I am thankful that 
I had that warm cup of coffee. I am thankful for my Instagram friends who get on here and chat with me in the morning. I am thankful for this book that I'm reading right now. I am, you know, actually stop and start naming the things you're thankful for and your mood is going to shift. So gratitude is a choice and that choice does take practice. We have to practice gratitude to make it a habit. Remember we talked about the negative thinking is a bad habit, which means we can create new habits, a new habit of gratitude. So maybe you set an alarm on your phone, a reminder on your phone every hour, name three things you're thankful for. Pray, prayer of gratitude. Thank you, Lord, for, and whatever you are struggling with, whatever you have the tendency to complain about, whatever it is today that you're upset about, flip it over, start praying prayers of gratitude for that situation, for that person. Um, ask God to bless that person that you're struggling with and your heart begins to change. So gratitude is a choice. It is a conscious and deliberate decision to focus on life's blessings rather than the shortcomings. A person's blessings rather than their shortcomings. A situation a blessing you see in the situation instead of just focusing on how the, the situation is causing you you know, the shortcomings of the situation, um, your work, your job, your family, your relationships, whatever it is, focus on the positive. When you focus on your blessings, your life feels abundant. When you focus on what's missing, life feels incomplete. Does that lead to joy? No. Then gratitude is also a feeling. So it's a choice that we have to practice. It's also a feeling. It is a sense of joy and appreciation in response to receiving a gift, whether that is a concrete object or an abstract gesture. Gratitude is also a capacity. It is a learned skill of creating value in routine situations and relationships. So he says um, at the end of today's reading, Become hypersensitive to the power of gratitude in helping you live a strong and joy-filled life. I'm confident that you recognize that gratitude is vital, vital to a life of joy. But are you expressing that? It's like we know gratitude has the power to change us, but do we choose it? It's a choice in the moment, and we have to practice that new habit, which can be hard work. Sometimes I'm like, you know what? No, I am mad about this, and I'm not grateful. <laughs> I'm like a little stubborn two-year-old having a temper tantrum. I don't want to be grateful. I'm really mad or I'm really sad about this and I'm just going to wallow in it for a few minutes. Where does that lead me? That leads me to more sadness. So in those moments, can I start making the better choice? Can I be the stronger person? Can I step into who God created me to be and choose new thoughts? Choose to practice gratitude. So we know gratitude is impactful, but knowing is not what counts, right? The head knowledge is not what changes our lives and brings transformation. So um, that is my encouragement to you today. What are you practicing? You cannot complain and be grateful at the same time. So if you actually stop and make yourself start naming the things you're thankful for about the person, about your spouse, about your job that you hate, start naming the good. See the good. Practice seeing the good. How has gratitude enabled you to experience God's grace even in the midst of a trial? In what ways has God shown his grace in your life recently, even in those hard things that you want to wallow in? Um, think about what is something beautiful you can look out your window and see. What is something beautiful in the person that you're struggling with? How has a rough situation in the past brought you growth? God's going to do that again. Um, so the four, eight principle, choosing gratitude, choosing to meditate on whatever is true, noble, lovely, right, pure, admirable, praiseworthy, excellent. Think about such things. It's a choice. It takes practice. It can be hard, but it's so worth it because then joy is there. Gratitude releases joy. Complaining does not. All right. I hope you guys have a great day.